Hi, nice to see everyone. It is the summer. I'm sure that it's pretty hot in most people around the world these days. Uh, we're up here in Maine. It is 79, um, which for us is warm, warm enough, but not like you all. Um, today's presentation is about uh, Paul Broca. Um, if you know, if you had a stroke and aphasia, you have probably heard about Broca. Uh, because of him being the scientist and the Broca's area, which is a part of the brain where most people with aphasia have uh, are on the left side in the Broca's area of the brain up here. Um, the Most of the rest of the people <laughs> who have not had a stroke or aphasia, unless you're a, th a scientist or a therapist, um, probably haven't heard about a, a Broca. Um, but in our world, um, he is quite a famous person. And eventually, even the uh, educators will get to know a lot more about Broca, given the way educators are starting to learn more about how the brain works. Um, that gives them a tremendous foundation in terms of what it is they are trying to work with, which is humans, usually young humans, although not always. Um, but uh, to understand how the brain works is to understand how education can work riding on top of that foundation. And understanding about Broca is a big, big part of that. Um, when I had my first stroke and started looking for finding out anything about this thing called aphasia, of course, I found online, found Broca. Um, actually, the first thing I found was a book called Broca's Brain. Um, and you'll get to see that coming up soon uh, with another article um, in a couple of weeks. Uh, but found the book called Broca's Brain, and I bought that immediately. I still couldn't read it at the time, but um, if you had stroke and aphasia, you ought to get this book called Broca's Brain. You also should book, buy my book called The ABCs of Aphasia, um, because again, um, unless you had stroke and aphasia, most people will not know much about aphasia or how the brain works. Again, um, we have to, we, people with stroke and aphasia, have to continue to help educate the wider public, um, even just a little bit about how the brain works because uh, the, the rest of the people can better understand um, how the behavior works for humans, um, understanding how the brain works as a result of all of those activities. Um, so anyway, Broca was quite something. Um, he was a, a physician, basically, at the time. And he um, had been studying with his patients, um, clearly, who had strokes. And he wanted to study them and understand why the brain works, such that he had a person had a stroke, and how he could better understand how he could help heal some of them, um, and found out about aphasia. Uh, of course, at the time, he referred to it as aphenia, um, and back then, in the 18, 1860 time frame, they, um, there was a lot of debate with the other scientists about how to use that word aphasia versus aphasia, and ended up going with aphasia. Um, but along the way, as Broca was beginning to understand where language typically is located on the left side of the brain, at a certain particular fold in the brain here um, at, that eventually became something called the Broca's area uh, because that is a, a large part of how language is used. Um, although at the time uh, when they began to understand localization, basically saying, oh, if it's something's happening here, that means this. If it's something here, that means something else. And uh, localization was a was a big deal back then as they began to understand it. Um, and um, and that's what they went with. Of course, later with more tools, more scientific tools, more scientists uh, going forward, um, now we can better understand that the Broca's area and uh, there are other parts of the brain. Um, you'll get to see another article about another part of the brain called Leakey's area. Um, the uh, you get to see that an awful lot of the rest of the brain also helps with language. Um, so 
Uh, the Broca's area is a large component of it, often called the language center, um, but it's not the be all and end all. It's not where all language comes <laughs> and dies. Although if you have stroke and aphasia, um, obviously a lot of the uh, cells die along the way, uh, but we'll get to see more if you continue to watch my, my uh, articles and you can understand why uh, on the one hand, there's localization certain parts of the brain, and then there's a more a diffused uh, capacity that the brain has to use cells uh, throughout the body, uh, building um, uh, the activity that it needs to do going forward of language and other things as well. But anyway, uh, Broca started writing articles in the 1860s, 1861, and started um, helping people understand about aphasia. Um, but he ended up getting a couple of patients. This is at a hospital in Paris. Um, and he got a couple of patients who clearly had aphasia um, and really was in trouble. And the fellow died you know, fairly soon after that. Um, but while uh, in that process, uh, Broca was interviewing him and trying to help him better understand, tell me more. And the fellow obviously had aphasia and couldn't communicate at all other than using the word tan, tan, like tan, tan, tan. Um, but apparently he was quite um, um, animated such that if you ask him one question or another, he could still use just tam, 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 typically all three together, uh, but he had some emotions so you could understand. Do you like food? Oh, tam, tam, tam. Uh, if you don't like tan, you don't like, um, Spanish, he would say, tam, tam, tam. Not that he said any of those things, but yes, it was part of that, that he could actually um, continue to communicate what his needs were using just that one word, typically saying it one, two, three at a time. Um, but he died uh, soon after, and uh, Broca did, in, uh, did the uh, um, work on him, um, and he could see, looking at his brain, he could see just how damaged. We actually have pictures. I don't have it in the article, but if you read any of my work, you can get to see pictures that they have of that person's brain. And you can see it was so clearly um, uh, ruined, um, but could still communicate, even though he had all of that um, happening. So he did the autopsy and um, decided not to, this is Broca, uh, could see it, measured it, did what he could with the tools that he had at the time, beautiful pictures of it, you know, back then, um, but then put it into uh, alcohol um, uh, to preserve it for the future, hoping that that future of scientists with newer um, tools would be able to tell us a whole lot more. Um, so Broca did that, and he had another uh, patient with similar types of issues and also died and also did the autopsy and uh, wrote articles about it back then in the 1800s and then saved those uh, brains in alcohol. And uh, and sure enough, when the current, this is current, um, in, in 20, uh, 2006 and 7 um, with MRIs, which we all have seen, uh, they were able to go back and get those brains and did an MRI on those brains and then could tell a, a lot more about how the brain was working or not working as a result of one um, uh, uh, brain injury or another with those two particular um, patients. And of course, uh, having Broca, having held those brains um, 140 years before um, being able to take them back out and doing the MRI of those same two brains is quite a pretty an, an amazing thing. Um, the um, uh, the uh, Broca unfortunately had his own when he finally did die had his own issue um, and his brain too happens to be in another uh, labeled bottle of P called P Broca. Um, at that same museum uh, in Paris. So it is quite amazing that uh, we get to see it sort of coming full circle 
from uh, the 1800s with Broca and many other scientists at that time around Europe and the United States, the 1860s, um, and saving the brains of those patients and many, many other patients, and then saving uh, Broca's brain as well, um, such that others can then see it and can see actually some of the issues that, that uh, only we can see since he couldn't see it himself. So all of that is quite, quite um, interesting, interestingly. Um, the, um, but you get to see it in the article. There's also quite a, 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 a scientific uh, debate uh, with another scientist at the time, a guy named um, uh, Dax, Dax, D-A-X, um, when uh, Gaz, Gaz Tave Dax um, had also written a paper um, about his, about his, uh, well, Mark uh, Dax is the one who did this work uh, many, many years before Broca, um, but he didn't publish well. He didn't get it out for people to better understand. So it was a big controversy, a big problem with that um, that you'll see in the article as well. Um, but eventually it became Broca and aphasia uh, as a result of all of that kind of work. Um, the, um, and Broca has gotten so famous, obviously, uh, around Europe and the United States, that eventually he became one of, there are 72 uh, famous um, engineers, scientists, chemists uh, that are engraved on the, uh, uh, the, uh, the tower, the Eiffel Tower in, in uh, Paris, and Broca is one of them. So you can actually read about it. You'll see that in the article too. There's a hyperlink that gets to, to the 72 names that have been inscribed there. And you get to see Bro, Bro Paul uh, Broca as well. So it's quite an interesting story to hear a lot more about him and the twists and turns of his work and the and the issues he had, the problems he had with other scientists trying to figure that all, all this out um, and finding out, of course, that many other of the scientists that you have been reading about uh, in my articles work together um, around Europe, but did work together at that same um, uh, hotel, uh, sorry, uh, same hospital uh, in Paris. See that, guys, for us with stroke and aphasia, there are still issues. If you've seen it in my videos before, this happens to be one of them. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, I will say hotel instead of hospital. And sometimes I'll say uh, airports instead of cars. And I have no idea why, uh, but that seems to be the case. Um, anyway, just to let you know that I'm not really just crazy, just having these kinds of issues that appear to appear to pop up every once in a while. But um, but thank you very much again. Uh, check out the article, check out the video, and I'm looking forward to the next <clears throat> article coming up in two weeks. Nice to see everyone. Take care of yourself. Have a good summer. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.